Aren't you glad that he loves you? Amen? <laughs> well, praise God. You know, we're getting ready to do communion. And one of the things about communion, it reminds us of how much he loves us. Isn't that pretty cool? That he loved us enough that he died on the cross of Calvary. He loved us enough to offer us the gift of salvation. That's pretty cool. And can you imagine all the precious promises that go with it? Pretty neat to know how much God loves us and uh, wants to work so powerfully, powerfully in our lives. Charlie and uh, uh, Dave, how, can you, uh, uh, huh? Oh, are you able, Charlie? Okay. Carolyn, that, she asked me. Okay. <laughs> Let me share this passage of Scripture with you and, and uh, a familiar passage, but in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, starting with verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Well, let's join together in prayer, and we're going to pray over the, the bread and over the cup. And uh, as they pass it out, hold the, the bread and cup, and we'll take it all together, okay? So let's join together in prayer. Father, thank you for just a reminder of how much you love us. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Father, thank you that we have forgiveness of sin because of your demonstration of paying the price on the cross of Calvary. Thank you. Father, thank you that we know the rest of the story, that you was raised from the dead and you live today. And we thank you. And may you live strongly and alive within our hearts, Father. And Father, may we always be mindful of how much you love us. And may we always be willing to offer our thanksgiving and our praise and our glory and honor to you, for you truly are worthy to receive. Bless the bread, and Father, bless the cup. Speak to our hearts, and Father, bring refreshing, bring renewing of strength within our lives, Father. And we commit to you this morning. We commit our lives, we offer our love in Jesus' name. we prepare to receive the bread and the cup. Let's receive it. thanksgiving and praise and glory and honor to the one who does this receive this morning. Let's join together. In By the time I made it home You were already in bed Chubby cheek pressed to your pillow I bet time book you read 
And I noticed that you looked older than you did yesterday. You've been growing up while I was away. You made a pile of leaves in the front yard. I guess it's already fall. By the look of those pictures your mama took, the two of you had a ball. And it made me glad, but a little sad, to see those games you played. I missed a lot of smiles while I was away. And for every dollar I earned, there's a lesson you This morning, as I share the message with you, at the end of the message, we're going to pray for all the fathers and uh, have a special treat for uh, uh, the fathers, and, and uh, so we'll do that as we come to the uh, end of the message. Uh, this morning, I, I want to continue a theme of dealing with core values that I think are very important that we get established in our life and established in our church. I read a devotion, and I want to uh, and it had the story in this devotion. And it used the passage of Scripture from Psalms 100. And, of course, Psalms 101 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. And uh, how many of you realize that we need to praise God? We need to exalt Him and magnify Him. And uh, when you think about all that God has done in our lives, uh, we could never thank Him. We could never praise Him enough. But I read this story, and it was worked into this devotion, and it was a conversation with an accomplished violinist, and she was asked whether or not the coveted violin made by Stradivarius was really all that different. I thought that was an interesting question. And uh, uh, the interesting thing about a, a Stradivarius violin, if you can ever see one or find one on sale, the Starting price is $1 million. That's a pretty, that's pretty high price violin, wouldn't you say? And uh, uh, so the question was asked, what makes the sound from the Stradivarius violin so great? And here's the definition or in the story, and it really touched my heart. It said, the violinist explained that Stradivarius, he lived in a small Italian village in the 1700s. Just one age would stop to think that he made violins and, and, the, and they're still around. Okay? Since he was so poor, he could not afford to buy fine wood for the violins that he made. So he would go to the harbor and he would fish wood out of the harbor. Isn't that interesting? And he would dry the wood and let it dry and then he would make the violins out of this wood. The interesting thing, back in the 1700s, the harbors was a cesspool. They dumped all of the series, they dumped everything into the harbor. I mean, it was a, a literal mess. But yet, in the midst of all the trash and all the human waste and, and, and all the, the garbage that was dumped in, Stradivarius would literally pull this wood out of that, let it dry. And the violinist went on to say, an expert decided that they would examine the wood from these violins. And what they discovered was that they was microbes that had contaminated the water, and it had literally eat it, it began to eat away the sails of the wood. And so the wood inside was hollowed out. All these many little sails that had destroyed that. But what it created, it created a, a chamber that all of this sound would begin to blend together and come out of these violins. Isn't that a pretty interesting story? And, and who had ever thought? And so I, I read that, and I, it touched my heart, and I began to think about our lives. We are born into a world of sin. We are damaged by sin. We are damaged by the influences of the sin. But God looks down in his mercy, and God looks down in his loving kindness, and guess what? He picks us up out of the muck and the mire of life. And guess what he does? He places within us the power of his Holy Spirit. He places within us his love and his grace and his loving kindness. And you know what? The Bible says he makes us a new creation. 
Isn't that pretty cool? And you know what? Don't you think we ought to be like the psalmist, that we ought to shout to the Lord, that we ought to serve the Lord with gladness, that we ought to praise him because of what he has done in each one of our lives. When I think about people that have been shipwrecked, people who have been stricken and influenced by the sins of this old world, and yet God reaches down and touches them. I, I, I got to thinking about, can you imagine Paul and Silas in the book of Acts? I mean, God literally touched Paul, which we know as Saul. He touched Silas, and he made them new creations. And even in the midst of the persecution, guess what? It said at midnight, they were singing a song. And I, I thought about this. I bet those prisoners had never heard a song like that. The, the joy unspeakable and the full of glory, even in the midst of persecution, was coming out of these men. And they were shouting to the Lord. And they was praising God. And so I thought about as I share these messages with you, I want you to sit back and listen a minute. We need to become people who love God so much that we sound out forth the joy unspeakable and full of glory that should come forth from our life. Can I hear an amen out of that? You see, if we're born again, if we have been set free by the power of God, how many realize we need to declare that message? If you have your Bible, you can turn with me to John, the first chapter. John, the first chapter. And while you're turning there, I want you to understand, the reason I think it's so important, guess who your audience is when you sound forth the praises? God. God is hearing you sound forth as the new creation that he has created in you. And he is, let me tell you what, he loves to hear. It says it's a sweet-smelling aroma to him when we sound forth our praises. So listen to this in John, the first chapter. John, the first chapter, starting with verse 12. It says, as many as receive him, meaning Jesus, as many as receive Jesus, to them he gives the right. You can put in parenthesis the power, the ability to become children of God. Even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. I want you to understand as we go through these messages, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, when you open your heart up and you surrender to him, he places this treasure inside of you. He places the Holy Spirit inside of you that becomes a potential power that can cause you to be Christ-like, that you can be the reflection of his glory. Now, also take your Bible and look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. It says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not of ourselves. I want you to understand, when God touches your life and when you willingly open your heart up, and surrender to him and say, I invite you into my life. You receive this treasure of the Holy Spirit. It has unlimited potential. It has unlimited abilities. It has all the resources you'll ever need to be victorious in Christ Jesus. Isn't that exciting, guys? I, I want you to think about that. You see, as I do these messages, I want you to recognize with me that we need to be empowered by God's Holy Spirit, that our church needs to experience and have a hunger and a thirst for the direction of the Holy Spirit in our life, that we will yield our lives to the Holy Spirit. You know, I thought about this. Uh, I think uh, uh, Larry and Joe Tanner always like to discuss freedom of choice. And, uh, you know, it, freedom of choice is a pretty important thing. But how many realize it carries great responsibility with you? You choose whether you want to receive Christ. You choose whether you want to allow the Holy Spirit to rule and reign in your life. You choose whether you want to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. You choose. But how many realize you can make the wrong choices sometimes? Is that not true? What I want to do in the next series of messages is I want to create a hunger in you that you'll make the right choices that you'll tap into this treasure that is placed in you and that you'll allow this treasure 
to be developed and become alive and real within you, even to the point as Paul and Silas, in the most difficult moment of their life, they were sounding forth the praises of him who called them out of the darkness into the marvelous light. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7 through 10, listen to what it says. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, and not of worthless any man should boast. And then listen to verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before, beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, can you imagine this? It's not anything you can do, guys, except make the right choice and say, I surrender to God. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that God raised him from the dead. I believe that when I ask him, he will come into my life. He makes you a new creation. But listen to what it says. We become his workmanship, created in the Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before. As you sit here and listen to me, I want you to understand something. God has your design before you even believed on him. God knows exactly what you need before you ever trusted him, before you even acknowledged he existed. He has this plan. He has this workmanship. He wants to create in within you a, a masterpiece. No different than the violin was created in a, a masterpiece. God wants to take his Holy Spirit and Put that treasure in you, and as you make the right choices, he will reveal this workmanship. Think about this. Stop and listen. God has given everything we need in this life when he placed the Holy Spirit within you. Everything you ever need is in there. Don't you think you ought to make the choice to tap into it? Don't you think you ought to make the choice to say, well, I want to recognize the Holy Ghost. I want to recognize the Spirit of God in me. I want to recognize what God can do in my life. One of the neat things that we've been doing, I keep sharing this, but there's somewhere around 35 to 40 ministries that have been birthed out of no greater love, uh, out of people who have been in no greater love for, for years. Can you imagine we're celebrating 46 years of no greater love? Isn't that pretty, isn't that pretty phenomenal? 46 years. Fred Bishop, the founder of it, Fred Bishop, the, my mentor, and Fred Bishop, who's probably closer to me than, than my own family. And yet to think 46 years later, all these ministries have been birthed out of it. You know, people like Sarge and Sue giving their life. And, and when you hear their hearts cry to say, wow, we can't wait to get back to Vietnam. You know, uh, gay, uh, 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 Bob Gay and his wife live in India. And guess where they minister? They minister in the leopard colonies. And, and God is working miracle after miracle. I mean, one story after another. But isn't it pretty exciting that these people have made choices and they've allowed the Holy Spirit to work powerfully in their lives and open doors that no man, you know, you couldn't even dream at the time, maybe what God was doing. Well, see, as I share with you, I want you to understand and listen and think about this. This great treasure, think about this. This great treasure that has the greatness of his power is in you, in you. It lives inside of you, and it's a treasure. This treasure has the power to make you this new creation. Isn't that pretty cool? This treasure has the ability to help you be Christ-like. This treasure has the ability to create within you this masterpiece that God has designed perfectly for you. And, you know, think about this church. We are here, 2019. You guys have migrated in here, and... Together, we make up the family of God here in Ava, Illinois, called Ken Cade Christian Fellowship. As we go and work together, I want to cause an awakening to take place within you why we are here. I, how, how many think we ought to be a spiritual oasis in, here in southern Illinois? A place people can come and find refreshing of their soul. They can find strength. They can find encouragement. I want you to think about that, that as we work out and try to discover what God's purpose is for us here at Kincaid Christian Fellowship. You see, 
We're here in 2019 as a church, as Christian individuals, to declare the message of Jesus and to continue his ministry here on earth. Think about that. We're here to be the salt and the light of the world. We're here to bring glory and honor to him by living and by demonstrating, by being set apart people, allowing God to manifest his glory through us. And have you realize he gets glory when we live according to his will. Amen? You know, I, I, Jeff, I, I kind of like that part about the gray hair and all that in Jesus loves me, you know. I, I, I was working on this project. Uh, matter of fact, it's really been a challenge to me to go to the doctors and they say, well, at your age, these things happen. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want to accept that. You know, uh, I don't, uh, 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 but it seems that uh, that be, comes the example. But what I did, I looked up uh, the importance of, and, and here's, this, here's the, 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 the part of it. The importance of knowing and doing these things if you're over 55. Look at this crowd, and we, 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 a lot of us hit that over that 55, okay? I'm sorry. That's, uh, but here's the things that are important, core values, if you're over 55. And uh, there, there are five, actually maybe six, core values. Flexibility. Have you ever had trouble not being too flexible? Uh, cardio, strength, balance and your core muscles. And it says, of these, strength, flexibility, and balance are the most important when you're old. You know, uh, me and Carolyn went to one of these evaluation things to evaluate our core muscles. They had me in one room, and they had Carolyn in another room. I could hear Carolyn screaming all the way through there. I couldn't do it when I was 16. Don't try to make me do it now. <laughs> we got done with that, and I said, you want to go back? And she said, you'll never take me back <laughs> But you know, one of the things, have you, uh, you stand on one foot like and balance yourself. Have you ever tried that? I've been practicing the reason I can do this. <laughs> yeah. But isn't it amazing how, you know, and, and, and the reason for that is it says the older you get, your muscles shrink and your joints become weaker. And have you ever noticed that a lot of people fall the older they get? Isn't that true? Matter of fact, I can trip over the rug and really just have a terrible mess. And, and uh, uh, it's amazing. And so they said that you have to work on that. And you have to prepare yourself. But I want you to think of what we're going to do and what I've been doing is there's core things that I think we need to work on. One of the things that I've emphasized so much as a core thing is we need to be people of prayer. Can I hear an amen out of that? That we need to focus on praying. And I, I've, I've created this little thing. Prayer, presence, and power. When you pray, God's presence comes. How many of you hear? He believes, you believe he hears and answers prayer, okay? Don't you think that's a core value that we come back to be people of prayer, that we develop and, and, and be willing to pray? And along with that, that we be praise and worship driven. God inhabits the praises of his people. God dwells where people praise him. And we need to be a people that have a hunger and a thirst to praise him and to worship and adore him and to get literally caught up in him. And then the third one is a core value that we recognize the need and the importance of being empowered by the Holy Spirit, that we allow the Spirit of God to work powerfully in us. And you see, I, I want you to think about this because these are important areas. You see, I, I believe in this empowerment of the Spirit, and you need to write these down. There, there's three areas I think are very important, and we're going to discover these together and uh, be able to develop them as we go through that. Number one is the power of God that is over us. And when I'm talking about the power of God that is over us, I'm talking about dominion authority, the kingdom of God, all power and all authority. What did Jesus say to the disciples when he gave the great commission? He says, all power and authority has been given unto me. Therefore, in the light of that, go into the world. When Nicodemus, in John the third chapter, he came to Jesus, he wanted to know how to be born again. Actually, he wanted to know how to be a part of what Jesus was doing. And Jesus staggered his mind by saying, you need to be born again. And he tried to look at it in the flesh and thought, it'll never happen because I'm an old man. But Jesus made this statement in John 3 and verse 4. He said, Nicodemus, 
for you to see into the kingdom of God, you must be born again. And then he comes back and he says in verse 4, for you to enter the kingdom of God, you must be born again. So I want you to think about power over us that God has a kingdom. It is a heavenly kingdom. It is a kingdom that has no limitation. It is a kingdom that has an abundance of supply. It is a kingdom that you and I as believers can enter into and walk under the dominion and the authority of that kingdom. Wow. When you read in Romans, the 14th chapter, verse 17, it says the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And I want you to understand, if you will allow me to teach you, if you will allow me to teach you, I will reveal how you can walk in this kingdom and you can find righteousness and you can find peace and you, I want you to understand, you can find joy unspeakable and full of glory because you realize that you have a protection. You have a shield, that you have a banner, his banner over me. Wow. He is a strong tower of safety. He is my shelter. You need to read Psalms 91. And I want you to understand, when you develop Psalms 91, you can understand that you can live in this world and you can be victorious. That you have a covering. And it's called the kingdom of God. Isn't that pretty cool? Unlimited power, unlimited authority, unlimited resources. Wow. Isn't that pretty cool? Power over us. Power from within. The Holy Spirit that comes in you, established within you. Now think about this. It establishes within you God's character. It establishes within you spiritual integrity. It establishes within you the ability to be Christ-like. But how many of you realize choices come again? You have to ch choose to allow that to be developed in your life. And it's not a flesh and blood thing. It is a spiritual thing that is developed within your life and that you experience the power of God. You see, to be born again, I want you to think about this. When it talks about being born again, you're born into this kingdom. God places his spirit in you. And he wants you to be able to learn how to walk in that. And then the last one is power with. And when you read the scriptures, it says when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, it'll give you power. And that word power there is due to me. It means the ability to do something. How many realize we need the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to be the witness, to be the representatives, to go out and, and, and proclaim the message of the gospel? Did you ever notice something? When you read the Gospels and you look at the disciples and you, you look at the, the, the followers, and then you read the book of Acts, do you realize there's a major difference? In the book of Acts, they experienced the outpouring of this power. And these people became bold. And they prayed for more boldness and more boldness. And they began to proclaim. And they went from house to house praising God. They, they stood up even in the midst of persecution and they made a stand for the gospel because this power was upon them. This power was motivating them to go out and proclaim the message of Christ. And so as we go through this journey, I, I want you to understand the importance of, of the power of God. And, and, and if you'll read through the scriptures, you'll find this message is interwoven all through. Listen to Exodus, the 14th chapter in verse 31. After God parted the Red Sea, how many of you believe that's a demonstration of power? Can you imagine if you were standing there and, and God parted the Red Sea? But listen to what the script, he says, After God parted the Red Sea, when Israel saw what great power the Lord had used against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and they believed in the Lord. That's pretty neat scripture, isn't it? I guess it created a little bit of belief in you if you stand there and the Red Sea parted. The only thing that amazed me, the Egyptians was foolish enough to try to cross. And you know what? A demonstration of power. Guess what? Their wheels fell off out in the middle of the, the divide. Well, I'm in a mess now. And it was. Think about that. They feared and they believed in the Lord. Numbers 11:23 says, And the Lord said to Moses, Is the Lord's power limited? Now you shall see whether my word will come true or not. How many believe it came true? Amen. Psalms 106, 8. Nevertheless, he said that, Saved him for the sake of his name that he might make his power known. Even in the rebellion of the Israelites, if you read all that psalm, even in the rebellion, even in their stiff-neckedness, 
Even in their stubbornness, he said he saved it in his power. You see, what we're going to do in the next little bit, we're going to have some wake-up calls. And we are going to see if we can walk together in the power of the Holy Spirit and see if we can discover some of these elements in our life. You know, uh, the spirit empowerment means that you produce spiritual fruit that's are life-changing, kingdom-focused, not selfishly focused and not self or fleshly birth, but God producing in you the manifestation of his spirit and changing how you live, how you think, how you talk, how you act. Wow. The spirit empowerment means your power to be a witness or to do ministry is spiritually charged, spiritually designed, spiritually motivated, moving you to do things that you never dreamed possible. Spirit empowerment means you live for the spirit and not for the sinful flesh. And you know, I want you to understand the importance of this, and I'm going to quit. When you read John, the, the, the 15th chapter, Listen to verse 4 and 5. It says, Abide in me, and I in you. And the branches cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Key here, abiding relationship with Jesus. But listen to what it says in verse 8. For by this... My Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. How many believe it's great importance that we learn how to bear fruit? If God is glorified in this, shouldn't we be serious enough to bear fruit? Hmm? Does that make sense to you? And he says, if you will make a choice to have an abiding relationship with him, to abide, listen, Abide with him in prayer. Abide with him in praise. Abide with him in his word. Abide with him in your quiet times. Abide with him when we worship together. Make that a decision to say, well, I am going to focus on an abiding relationship that my Father may be glorified. Can you imagine, guys, how Stradivarius felt when he heard those violins play? Hmm? Masterpiece. Master creation. Out of the cesspool of that harbor came life. Out of the cesspools of sin comes life. And we become a new creation. And he wants us to sound forth. He wants us to show forth. Think about this. One of my favorite scriptures, Galatians 5.1, says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where which Christ has made you free, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Think about it. Stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Here's my thing. If you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe, and I want you to believe, and I want you to agree that regardless of what type of bondage you are in, what kind of difficulty you may be in, what kind of circumstances you may be in, God's greater. How many believe that? And God will break that yoke of bondage, and he will set you free. The choice is don't be entangled again in it. Does that make sense to you? Don't get entangled. If you get set free, don't get entangled again. And the way you don't get entangled in it is abide in him. Kind of a neat cycle, isn't it? So stand with me just for a moment. As you stand with me, choices. I went to Culver's the other night. You know what Culver's is? The ice cream place. The nicest little lady waited on me. And she said, sir, would you like one or two dips? Caramel pecan. She dipped in there, and you could see the caramel and the pecans. You think I took one or two dips? <laughs> Ruth said probably two or three. You know what? And I, I told her, I said, man, I said, I don't know what to do. She said, I'll take care of you. And I watched her. She gave me four dips, Ruth. Four dips. I'm telling you, that, that thing, it looked like. And, 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 and she said, I'm only going to charge you for one. I hugged her, guys. Now, here's the deal. You can have as many dips as you want, and he's not going to charge you anything other than ask you to believe. Isn't that pretty cool? Isn't that pretty cool? He says, do you believe? I'll give you all that's necessary to set you free. I'll give you all that's necessary to help you be successful. Let's make a choice this morning. Let's make a choice. Let's choose.
Let's say, God, I want more than you and I've ever. Is that a deal? Will you pray with and will you ask God to help you make the right choice? The right choice. And just give it to him and let him be the transfer. Father, we stand here this morning. And we ask you to forgive us because we've all made bad choices. We've all made mistakes. But Father, I thank you that your word says nothing can separate us from your love. And I thank you that you love us. You loved us so much that you made a way that we could find liberty, that we could find victory. I pray that you'll help us make those choices to surrender to you, to say, wow, I want all that you have to give. I want all that you have to offer. I want forgiveness. I want healing. I want salvation. I want power. I want love. I want kindness. I want all the ingredients. I want Jesus. And I thank you. Touch our lives this morning as we open our hearts and our minds and our thoughts to you. Come in and work powerfully. Father, for the fathers that are here this morning, God, work powerfully in their hearts. Father, touch their lives and strengthen them and empower them and enable them to be the fathers, to be the dads, the husbands that you so desire them to be. Work powerfully in their lives, Father. Create a hunger and a thirst. God, I, I was thinking about that scripture. It said, blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be filled. Oh, God, help us thirst for the things that make us right. Help us thirst for the things that will make us new creations. Touch the dads. Touch each life this morning as only you can. Thank you that we can pray the blessing upon the fathers. But God, I pray the blessings upon each person here this morning. And I'm asking you to work. I'm asking you to move with your Holy Spirit. And I thank you. I give you praise for you alone are worth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hug somebody around you. Jerry, will you grab those baskets back? Are the guys, there's candy for the, for the men.